What's going on guys and welcome back. In this video, I want to show you guys a cool little gadget that I installed in my car called a heads up display, which has been abbreviated to HUD. Now, you've probably seen these on the higher end cars and the um, higher end luxury or uh, higher end sports cars. It is an electronic device that displays certain types of information onto your car's windshield via a reflection, allowing you to keep your eyes on the road, increasing safety at the same time. I wanted to share with you my process and my thoughts of why I decided to get a heads up display. I broke it down to four main reasons as to why I needed something like this. One, I wanted something that updated the look of the car not make it futuristic but just something that gave me an edge you know over the normal and a heads-up display really intrigued me because of what it could do and the second thing is sometimes I like to drive with the steering wheel a little bit lower and a little bit laid back and when I do so I notice that the steering wheel is covering my speed and in order for me to see my speed I'd have to either glance over the steering wheel or bob my head down just to see the speed and that got very frustrating at times, so I wanted something that would allow me to see my speed at all times, which then brings me to my next point. Keeping your eyes on the road is going to increase safety for you and everybody else on the road. That split second is so important, and that's why I believe heads up displays were invented, just so that you were able to concentrate on driving and what's in front of you, and still be able to see certain information displayed via your heads up display. Lastly, another reason as to why I wanted a heads up display is simply because I'm one of those people who are really anal about the health of my car. And having a heads up display allowed me to monitor my car's health at all times. Things like your car temperature, your oil wear, your um, air pressure. I was able to monitor all these things with a simple device like a heads up display. The last thing I want is to cause more damage to my car when something like your coolant temperature overheats or um, your battery voltage is too low and also things like your air pressure. These things are very important in order to maintain your car and keep it in the best possible condition. These are the reasons why in the end I decided to go with a heads up display. Now you may feel differently or you may think that a heads up display isn't something that is necessary and that is all fine. There is no problems with that. I just wanted to share with you my experiences and why I decided to get a heads up display. Just to show you exactly what you get in the box, this is it right here. Okay, This is the heads up display. As you can see, it's a very simple device. It is 147mm by 14mm thick and 85mm wide. And that's it. I also wanted to point out that there are many different types of heads-up displays out there. There are smaller versions, there are different models, there are models that only display certain information, and there are much more simpler ones and that are much smaller. But I decided to go with this type of heads-up display for my own personal reasons. If you are someone who just wants to see the speed because that's all you care about, then by all means, look for a heads up display that only displays speed and maybe a couple of other functions like your battery voltage and so forth. Just do your research and you'll be able to find something that definitely suits your needs. As you can see, this is what you get exactly. You get the heads up display itself, you get the cable that plugs from your OBD2 port to your heads up display. And in this case, it's a mini USB cable and then to your OBD2 socket or your OBD2 port. And then you also get this double-sided mat, adhesive mat that allows you to place your heads up display in a certain position and keep it from sliding around back and forth as you drive. And lastly, of course, you get your manual. This is it right here. Okay, and this manual is basically just something that shows you, you know, the functionalities, the features it has to offer, how to basically route it, and also how to use it. On the back, it shows you the menu settings, what it has to offer, and in this case, my heads up display has 28 different functions. And that's what made it so appealing to me because I wanted a heads up display that wasn't just a simple one, but something that 
allowed me to customize it to my liking so that it wouldn't just display senseless information that I wasn't interested in. I also wanted to point out that the heads up displays are designed to basically fit in an OBD2 port. So if your car has an OBD2 port, you are able to install one of these in your car. However, with that said, you also need to do a little bit of research and make sure that the heads up display is able to be fitted to your specific car. However, in the operation manual or in the uh, in the product description when I bought it, it said something like um, cars after 2004 usually have an OBD2 port. Now, that is most likely going to be the case. So don't always go by what the manufacturer says. Do a bit of research and find out for yourself if the heads up display will fit in your car and work as specified. Now, let's get into exactly what this heads up display does and what it has to offer. This is the heads up display as it is installed in my car at the moment. Just behind this is where the mini USB plugs into it. I've simply put some double sided tape underneath it and then I've just simply stuck it onto my dash. This was the best way I could install it so that you do not see any running cables whatsoever. And then I've simply run the cable down the side and then dropped it down and plugged it into my OBD2 socket which is just underneath the dash here. I will show you how the cable is routed in just a second. This is basically how the heads up display comes when you buy it. It is a very simple thing to operate. You basically have a toggle switch here that goes left and right. There you go and as you toggle it you can go from different settings. So if you toggle left you can change from RPM to air pressure to uh, coolant temperature and then to the time and also your battery voltage and also your ignition angle and your acceleration and then if you toggle one more time you can turn it off completely there you go and then if you toggle right you can toggle two settings your throttle and also your fuel right now is your fuel and if I toggle one more time it shows your throttle you can also press this this toggle switch in and it makes a beep okay now you can customize that beep to not go off at all so you don't get any sound when you press your buttons now if you take a look at your your heads up display it displays what gear you're in your gear alarm and then it also displays your speedometer and that red speaker there means that you have sound when you press your buttons. You also have your coolant temperature in the top left hand corner. And of course you have your speed right there. Then you toggle left and right to change whatever you want to display. It is as simple as that, nothing more to it. Now, in order to go to menu settings, you simply press this toggle button directly in and hold it for a couple of seconds. And that brings us to the menu. And zero is for you to adjust your speed. Now, personally for myself, I have gone with 105, which is the default setting and that matches my speed. You need to be able to adjust it so that it matches your speed. You press it in again and then you go to one, which is your RPM setting, which is also the same thing. But you also have to adjust this so that it synchronizes with your RPM so that they are in sync with each other. Next you have your oil wear. Factory setting is 100 so I've left it on that. Then next is your RPM alarm. Once the RPM hits 6400 I will get a exclamation mark, a red symbol that will go off so I know to change gears. Next is your speed alarm. I just leave it on zero so I can set the speed myself. Next you have setting 5 which is your speed alarm mode. You can set when the, when the alarm goes off, I have it at 110. Next is your coolant temperature. We all know Mercedes Benz likes to sit at about 90 degrees and once you hit about 100 degrees you know that you're overheating. So I've left mine at 100 degrees. Next is your user interface mode. One is so that it displays everything and once you go over 80 kilometers an hour it will then only display your speed and then there is one which is a normal display and then two is only speed 
Next is your brightness. You go from 1 to 11. Next is your oil wear calculation. I've decided to leave it on the factory setting. And then 10 is how you want your a heads up display to start zero is a manual setting by default and one is auto then you have 11 which is the voltage in which you want your heads up display to stay on and then at what voltage do you want it to switch off so we can conserve battery and next we have your rpm switch whether or not you want your rpm image to display as you drive or not and 13 is your oil wear now there's two settings here constantly and overall at the moment i'm going to leave it on its factory setting which is zero then you have oil wear reference it says to use displacement to calculate oil wear i'm not sure about that so i still have to do a bit more research then you have 15 which is ecu rate zero being the fastest and five being the slowest but it also says before setting consult factory so i've decided to leave it on the factory setting and then you in here you enter your top gear mine is seven and then shift speed so i've left it on factory as i don't want to tinker with it and then there's power off ways for 18 zero is ordinary one for hybrid electric two for start stop cars and three is for special cars then you have 19 for the time you can set your time by toggling left and right and that will change your minutes and um, hours and then you have your alarm switch you can turn off your alarm or turn it on and then you have your sound switch so the beep you hear every time you press the button you can turn it on or off then you have your speed unit so you can either choose zero for kilometers per hour or one for miles per hour next you have reset so this is to reset to factory settings you can push up or down next you have clear fault i believe that you can also clear fault codes using this uh, heads up display 25 is locked protocol 0 for not locked 26 is um, special cars 0 is auto 1 2 3 is special cars I've left mine on 0 for auto then 27 is then your coolant switch whether or not you want to leave your coolant image on or off and lastly is 28 your gear switch if you want to turn it on or off and that is it once you are done setting everything you simply press it in again hold it there for a couple seconds and it will go back as you can see now i no longer have the coolant image nor do i have the rpm image or the gear image and there you have it guys that is all the functions of the uh, heads up display that i own now i'm going to show you how i routed the cable so that it was to my liking as you can see here the reason why they give you this reflective film is so that you can see everything very clearly that is why they have given you this reflective film so that you no longer see that double reflective vision so once i remove this as you can see you can see that it is still pretty clear but if you look carefully you get that double vision so that's why they've given you this so that when you paste it on you are able to uh, get rid of that double vision. I've decided not to use it because I am not um, I'm not too fussed with the double vision. All I really want to see is the speed and If I do want to see any other information, I will definitely toggle to it and it will show me as I switch to it That's how easy it is to use this heads-up display There we have it perfect just to show you quickly how I routed it. Okay, all I did was I popped this off here and as you can see right here i have got this installed which is basically an obd2 splitter so that i could have an on and off switch installed in case i wanted to scan the car i didn't have to keep on plugging and unplugging the obd2 port and then i simply ran the line up and down folded it over a couple of times I'm simply just going to zip tie that there as you can see that is where it plugs in right there you simply open your OBD2 port plug in your OBD2 socket in there in my case all I've done is add a splitter right here it goes to a power on and off switch you'll hear it turn on and off now as you can hear that beep that turns it back on that turns it off I just wanted the 
extra feature to be able to turn it on and off as I please. And so anytime I wanted to uh, scan the car, if I ever have an error message, I wouldn't have to unplug it. So that's why I went with this splitter function. And then what I've done now is I've ran the cable up. I took off this A pillar right here and then ran the cable around, tucked it in where the dash is and then plugged it into the heads up display. And then in order to hide everything, all I've done now is I've pushed it in here. Okay, as you can see, I've just pushed it in there so that it stays like that. And I still have access to the on and off switch. I pushed this one up here because I want it out of the way. So it's not dangling down the bottom. And then I simply just reinstall my side cover and Bob's your uncle. Everything hidden, out of sight, out of mind. Now I just pull back the weather strip. There we go. Completely installed. And it looks great. With just my on and off switch hidden right there. I mean, I could always just zip tie it so that it stays up more, but you know, that's something I can definitely do down the track. I just wanted to show you guys how it's fully installed and how there are no cables exposed whatsoever. So if you take a look here, as you can see, it just looks like the cable is coming from inside the dash and plugged straight into the heads up display. And that's all there is to it guys. That brings us to the end of the video. So I really hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, and always hit that notification bell so you're notified every time I release another video. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. This is Mike with Mikey's Vlogs, signing off. <laughs>